after. Your spirit man who was dead to God is what was born again. Now you have the ability and you have the access to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit to start making some changes in your life as the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Father begins to deal with you and I about our growth and development, he can talk to us one-on-one -on -one because now he has taken up residence in our heart. But he's got to also deal with what's going on in your soul, what's going on in your body. How come you think that way you think? Why are you thinking what you think? You need to change what you think about yourself. And, the, you know, this is the struggle of the believer. We say, okay, God, I got saved, but how come I still have issues here? It's a training. It's you've got to get into the Word of God and let the Word of God do its work. See, the, Jesus said, my disciples will allow the Word to abide in them, and they abide in my Word. That word abide means the word of God makes his home in us. It, he doesn't come as a temporary resident. He is permanent. He's abiding in there, and he's looking around at all the different furniture, all the stuff we got that we have accumulated over a lifetime. Say, well, okay, this needs to go. That needs to go. Need to bring this in. You need to stop this. Need to do this. So he's starting to make changes. We get uncomfortable because we get used to what we're used to. Sometimes we can get so used to our dysfunction that <laughs> it's such a hindrance that when God begins to speak to us about it, we don't want to make the change because that is comfortable even though we're dysfunctional. You get that? Yeah. But God said, I want, I want you to be what? Oh, we don't have them up there anymore. I want you to be made whole. I want you to have life. I want you to be equipped so that you can go out and minister that to someone else. But it's hard for us to do that when we are broke from the floor up, broke down, messed up, you know. We, yeah, I'm saved, but you got all this other stuff going on. God wants us to be made whole in our spirit, soul, and body, the whole man. He didn't just come and save your spirit. He came for the whole man, the whole enchilada. So we have to work out our salvation. So what does that look like? We got a lot of emotional memories. And when I was thinking about this yesterday, I remember uh, Gladys Knight's song, Memories, like the corners of my mind. Misty colored watered memories of the way we were. And you know how many songs you sit, you hear, and they take you back. You're, you're back there like it was yesterday, right? You're back there in a moment. Why? Because the emotions are attached to it. Whatever you were doing, <laughs> whether good, bad, or indifferent, like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, man, I do remember that. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. But God wants us to be healed made whole. Yes. Memories of the past attached to sights, sounds, smells, events, etc. They keep our souls in bondage. But our Father, our Father wants us free. Amen. So number two, the soul must submit to the spirit. Yes. Must. And God's not going to make you submit, have your soul submit to the Spirit, you have to make your soul submit to the Spirit. I have to make my soul submit to the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I mean, there's uh, digging into the Word, that means someone's got to do the digging. You and I have to do the digging. In Romans 9, 12, it says, For the children, not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. It was said to her, her meaning Rebecca, 
Rebekah, the mother of Esau and Jacob, that the older shall serve the younger. I believe that God was enunciating here a principle that the older is going to serve the younger. Get what I'm saying. You live 40, 50 years, and you are guided by your soul and your flesh, and it's making all the decisions what you're going to do, kind of attitudes you're going to have. Then you get saved. Your spirit, who's the younger? The spirit, because it's in baby form. The older is the soul. But God says the older is going to serve the younger. Yeah. Right? So what do you have to do? Well, like a new babe. New babies come out of the womb. We don't feed them steak and potatoes right away. <laughs> right? What do we feed them? Milk. The word says desire the sincere milk of the word so that you may what? Grow, grow thereby. We must grow up in the things of God. But we have to start somewhere. Milk, milk, and then progress on to, uh, what's the next phase after the baby? Uh, uh, oatmeal, formula, whatever, and then the solid food. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had my kids, so. But it's a sad state if you got to have a Christian who's been a Christian for 20, 30, 40 years and are still a babe. That's sad. Because God is saying, hey, you, you should be a teacher by now. You should be leading others to the Lord by now. You should be mentoring others by now. You should be, you should be, but yet you are having to feed on this milk over and over and over again. And I know our Father hates religion because religion keeps people bound up looking at something that is not what God planned for them to be looking at either a pastor or a program or whatever it is. Religion keeps people in bondage. God wants his people free. He wants you to start growing. And you know what? Growth is not determined like your physical growth. Our physical body, we're on a time schedule that we grow according to the DNA that God has put in our body. But your spiritual growth is predicated on how much you spend your time, spend time in the word. Hmm. Come on. Amen. Amen. And if we keep saying, God, <laughs> I don't have time. You guess what? The enemy knows that. He knows how much time we're spending in the word. And you know he's got something in store. Because he's going to try to bring something around that he knows that you don't have enough word level in you. And what's the next thing you're going to say? You're not going to say, oh, God, help me. You're going to say, oh, God. See, difference. You'll be calling a pastor. Will you pray for me? Be calling everyone else. Will you pray for me? I need help. I like people to come up and say, hey, will you get in a prayer of agreement with me? All right, there you go. All right. Most time people come up, will you pray for me? And some of the prayers that we hear, I kind of think, God, that's kind of simple. You know what I mean? I, I don't ask Pastor Darren hey, will you eat some food for me? And then I'm going to grow and be strong. <laughs> he eats his own food, so it will benefit his own body. But we expect others to eat and preach and pray and intercede and go to war on and on and on for us, and we're going to reap the benefit. Come on. When I joined the military, I came out of civilian world into the Navy. I had to learn a whole new language. I had to learn how to dress. I had to learn how to act. I had to learn everything new. I had to put off my civilian life and take on the Navy way. Sorry, Air Force people. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you got what I'm talking about. I had to take on the Navy way. When we come out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, God expects us to learn how the kingdom functions, how to be citizens of the kingdom. God has a way that is not the world's way. His way is a whole lot different than what you see out here in society. Most time, we think up is down, really down is up. We go down on our knees. That's the strength. God says, I need my people to have my priorities first, not theirs. The soul says, oh, I got this I want to do first. I want to live out my life first, then I'll serve God. There's no guarantee you're going to live out your life. There's no guarantee at all. People dropping like flies all around, you know, in the earth. There's no guarantee, but you know what you need to say, God, when I come into the kingdom, I no longer belong to me, just like when I went in the Navy. I no longer belong to me. I can't think like a civilian any longer. I need to think like a Navy corpsman, how you've called me to put down all that other stuff. I can't be entangled again with the civilian life. We can't be entangled again with culture. God's not extracting us out of culture, but he's saying that we meet, need to be uh, difference makers within the culture. But if we're looking at the culture and it looks great and we want to emulate them, we're on the wrong track. Now we talked about thoughts, how those thoughts are made. They become little grooves in our mind. And Chris Valadin talked about this when we were at the Holy Spirit Conference. And his analogy wasn't a tree analogy, uh, but it was a road. He said, you know, when you have the same thoughts all the time, and that's all you do, you, you uh, depend on those same thoughts, you, you're making a road. And that road keeps getting wider and wider. And so when anything comes up, you default to that thought pattern, and that road is wide, it's easy. But when God comes along, he said, I want you to renew your mind. Now he wants you to make new patterns. Now the road over here is smaller. So it's easier to default to the larger than to go God's way. But God said, if you allow my word to direct you by the Holy Spirit, you'll start making new thought patterns. And you'll become a new creature, all the way new creature in Christ Jesus. That's right, the older will end up serving the younger. Because if you're putting the word of God in you, the younger is starting to grow. It's starting to get stronger. True spiritual growth requires God's word. We can't get away from it. God didn't say, okay, you can go out and have a lot of experience. He said, growth requires his word. So, Psalms 131 says this, 131.2. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. Well, what happens when you wean a child off of formula or wean them off of anything? They begin to cry and put up a fuss because they're used to that. That was their security. But you're trying to wean them off of that to get them on to something better. Our soul does the same thing. Your soul begins to cry when you're trying to wean it from, hey, I'm not going to get angry over this. No, because if you had a propensity to get angry over every little thing, then now you need to quiet your soul down. Say, nope, no, no, that's not going to upset me. Oh, but your soul is going to act up. It's going to vie for why we can't get angry at this point, because you know what they said, you know what they did, on and on and on. But you've got to quiet that soul and begin to speak the word of God over it. Is everybody awake? Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. We've got to wean the soul. And we wean the soul with the word. 1 Corinthians 3. 1 through 2 says this, And I, brethren, I could not speak to you 
as spiritual people. 